why don't you take us back through like some of the developments of, of the actual movie just so we could stay on point with yeah so it, it starts off with you know they first arrive in vietnam also you'll you'll notice so the, um the aspect ratio kind of changes of you have kind of a very cinematic well, break aspect this ratio. down for the people who are not film school people like, um, such as myself so like nine sixteen is the aspect ratio where I'm trying to like explain. I don't, I don't want to use numbers to explain it because not a lot of people understand that. Uh, you know, you're watching a movie and there's bars at the top. There's black bars at the top and the bottom. Right. All right. So that's like nine sixteen ratio. So basically that's a very cinematic. And then when they do 16 millimeters, the bars are on the side. It's a square. Right. So you have one for the beginning. And then one for the flashbacks. And then when they really go into the movie, the aspect ratio widens. When and it's more like the when jungle. they go into the jungle, yeah. the aspect ratio kind of widens. Mm -hmm. And I really do feel like at that moment, you kind of feel like you're in a different movie. You're embraced more by like the jungle around you because now, mm -hmm. you know, uh, those black bars are gone it's taking up the entire frame of your television and you're more immersed into this jungle um so know. it's like a basically a, a technique that would kind of be subtle to the the to a person like me but it's one of those things that i'm probably emotionally reacting to without yes. realizing yes that's like the the concept basically yeah, yeah um I, that's that's interesting wes anderson kind of did something similar where uh, did you see grand budapest hotel no uh, basically it's in like three different time, uh, periods and he uses like three different aspect ratios for each one. But so they, but what I'm saying was they arrive in Vietnam and it's very much like this buddy movie yeah, in the beginning yeah. of like, these are old friends who are joking around. You slowly see that there's some disagreements between them. Sorry. Um, the character Paul is like a Trump supporter and they like, you giving know, him a hard time. giving him a hard time about it. You know, they, there is some kind of tension between, you know, just above the surface between them and the Vietnamese people where, uh, you know, the former uh, North Vietnamese soldier gives them drinks and Paul doesn't want to drink it. I was almost thinking, like, are those poisoned? <laughs> like, I thought that too, but then uh, I thought that too in the beginning, yeah. but... I, I think he's just, tr it's trying to say that basically, like, for some people, they no longer see the Vietnamese as the enemy. And even for, like, some older Vietnamese, they, they find a way that they can make peace with the people that they once fought against. Mm -hmm. But for other people, like Paul, it's like, no, this is still going on for me. And, like, that guy is still my enemy. Right. Um. So they go to Vietnam to they're under it's under the you know guise of they're going to find the remains of their squad leader. And when really well they are trying to do that but they're also trying to find this gold yeah. that was promised to the Vietnamese people but they hid it themselves. Uh with the idea of this is a country that has done nothing for us as black Americans and as black soldiers. And we have gone into this war and many of us has, uh, fought and died. And what is our country really doing for us? Why do we like need to protect this gold when we can take it for the, for ourselves? Uh, like what, what motivation do we really have to protect the U S government's property? I, I really like the use of like the the real footage of civil, different civil rights leaders and yes. different things that were going on in the '60s and like how they kind of just changed the title slightly. Yeah. Like and yeah. then they show a clip of Trump and they refer to him as I forget what they said, but they like it's very um, it's very uh, it's a, it's an interesting. You don't really see that a lot like within a movie like that, using real footage. Like that's they're they're, they're kind of they're kind of like breaking the. Yes. The um they're breaking like the the universe of yeah. the movie a little bit to show you like actual that's clips. that's Spike Lee. He does that. He'll just cut to like some historic pictures. I mean, Spike Lee uh, he's well known for his narrative movies, but the majority of his filmography is documentary. 
Right. And he and he's always doing that if he puts actual um like documentary footage into his actual movies. And I think you're you're kind of doing two things where you're adding historical context um to a narrative film and then also you are making the comparison of what happened in the 60s to what happened today. It you know it's I gotta say, it was pretty disturbing, like hearing, hearing some of those civil rights leaders and what they were saying, because it's just like, man, have we made zero fucking progress? Yeah. Because a lot, a lot of like what's going on now with you know Black Lives Matter and a lot of, and 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 just politics in general, we're talking about the same shit. Yes. Like I, I was just listening to this great fucking um pod, podcast on, it's a, it's a narrated by chuck d from public enemy but it's all about oh. the clash the band the clash uh, yeah and like there's an interview from fucking 1983 with joe strummer and he's like talking about how they're part of the this protest for health care and and affordable housing and it's like are we ever gonna fucking yeah. like figure this shit out i mean it's just kind of well, sad from that he point. um spike lee this this um Deals a lot with kind of what happened in the 60s with the Vietnam and the civil rights uh, era. His last movie, Black Klansman, yeah. also is... I don't, I don't know if you have seen it. It's very much about Donald Trump. Yeah. It's, you know, the main antagonist of Black Klansman is David Duke, who, you know, he was this very charismatic uh, leader of the Klan... Yeah, who, obviously, I know who David Duke is. Yeah, so, so they use David Duke... In the movie, like actual footage of him, or no? To- on- Topher Grace, the actor, plays David Duke in the movie, and he's kind of like he the. Kinda, I can see that it kind of yeah. does look like. Well, him. It, you you see David Duke and the way they describe him of he's trying to make racism like palatable for. That's what David Duke does. Yeah. The uh, trying to make it like disguise of like yes, it is racism, but in a, like a pill that's easy to swallow for people. And yeah, the whole thing. The entire time they're like cutting, cut, uh, cutting to clips of Trump, yeah. and it's trying to make that comparison. And I would say Black Klansman. It's not about David Duke. It's about Trump. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, David Duke like stopped wearing the robes. Yes. and started dressing. He, and he started in a wearing suit. A, a suit and tie instead. Yeah, exactly. Because he realized that the robes had like a certain significance. He was saying the same thing. He was just yeah. trying to say it in like a way that like. I guess like white people who don't want to be labeled as a racist would. Well, the current, yeah. it. the current, like the current, like leader of the KKK also doesn't wear the robes. I mean, he, I'm sure he probably does in his private life or whatever, but like I've seen interviews where he's, he's also in a suit and their, their new thing now is that they're like, we're not a hate group. Like we just want to celebrate our culture. Like yeah, that's else, a load of bullshit. Yeah, of course. Um, but they're like a lot of, everyone's allowed to celebrate their culture except white people. You know, that's, that's, that's their the new dumbest. Kind of, I, I've heard that argument yeah. before and that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life of agreed. First of all, I, we're Irish and we celebrate our culture all the time. Well, we're so not we'll really anything, let's about. be honest. Like, yeah, I, I was having right. this conversation. That I don't feel it's it's weird being American. Being American is kind of it's kind of weird. It is a little weird. Because we're all from different places and we kind of identify with our heritage, but we're not really from there yeah i am um, from here but then what does that mean because like american is like not really a yeah. thing either you know it's like it's it's just very weird you know like our family we have irish we have sicilian we have puerto rican yeah um but we're all we've all been in america going back to we're also the early we're also like the only country that does that where people yeah. identify from where their ancestors are from rather than where they were born we <laughs> yeah, are the it's, only it's country kind that of, does that it's kind of weird like the whole the american it's such a loose thing you know and that's yeah. why when it's co-opted by like just straight up white um nationalism it's like just obviously such a load of bullshit because yeah. it's like well being American by nature means you're from wherever the fuck. Yeah. You know, just because you're from European descent doesn't mean, you know, you, you don't get to claim America more than 
certainly Native Americans they, or, or, or or anybody who was here. Because that's fucking America that has no, we have no nationality. 